let's get started. So for fl plugging in your machine, reach over here, put your power cord into the machine, and you've got a switch uh, right beside it to turn it on for your light. What you do want to do is plug your machine into a sh surge protector. That's just going to keep things safe no matter what machine you're actually using. Let's start by winding a bobbin. First up, let's go ahead and lift up the presser foot, little piece of paper that comes from the factory there. It will come with one bobbin inside the machine and about three additional ones in your accessory bag. Now these bobbins are specific for this machine, so when you are purchasing them from your Husqvarna Viking dealer, make sure you tell them that you've got an emerald soy machine. They'll know which bobbins to get you. Okay, so for threading up your machine, we've got two different ways that thread is put onto a spool. Either it looks like it's got little crisscrosses on it, or the thread is what's called stacked thread, where as you look at the spool, the threads go right next to each other all the way up and down. So depending on which spool you have, you'll have a, for the stacked thread, we're gonna lay it down. Here is one of your spool caps is actually stored on the machine when it's shipped to you. And then you'll have another one in your accessory box. So this will be what we're using since I have a smaller spool that we'll actually wind up with. And then make sure that spool cap goes all the way on. Don't leave any gap in between there. Now if I was using this spool with the thread that's crosswound, I'm gonna pull out the vertical spool cap and then place the thread on it like so. And then it will spin like that. So that actually will help in a lot of different types of threads that you're using. And sometimes depending on how they're set up, they will come off one way better than the other. Okay, so we're gonna take our thread come underneath the guide in the back, and this is the pretensioner right here. You can almost put your fingernail in it and it snaps. By going across there, and we're going around it clockwise, bring it all the way over, and then take your thread and from the inside to out in one of your holes, thread the bobbin all the way through. I like to put this on, push it over to engage it. Now if you step on the foot control right now, the needle is gonna go up and down like that. So to prevent that from making extra noise, all you need to do is take your hand wheel and pull it out. By holding the thread straight up and stepping on the foot control, that will go ahead and let that thread eventually break off and continue to wind the whole rest of the bobbin. These really fill up fast, but, uh, and they fill up full. So these bobbins are a great size for this machine. I love them. So once you get it all, once it gets all the way full, it will stop spinning. So just keep your foot on the foot control. Okay, so when you're done, clip the thread, take the hand wheel, push it back in. That will engage the needle from going back up and down. And then take your bobbin and slide it all the way off. Let's go ahead and uh, thread the machine next. This pretensioner for the bobbin. If you don't get your thread in there and uh, maybe it just goes around loosely, this bobbin will not feel as tight and firm as it should. Probably kind of look squishy and that is not a bobbin to use in your machine. Do kind of rewind it and use it for a, um, on, wind it onto another bobbin that will really help. So when we go to thread the machine, we don't use the pretensioner and go ahead and follow the arrows straight down. Do make sure your presser foot is up. If it's down, then your thread's not gonna get into all the places it needs to go. Come up, we're gonna go all the way back on the right side, bring it to the left, and then all the way down. It'll hook into this top little take-up lever. There's one guide at the top of the needle, and then we'll give you an up-close use of the needle threader in just a second. We'll do that on a separate video, and then just pull that loop right on through. Okay, for putting your bobbin in, what you wanna do is look and have your thread coming off the left-hand side of the bobbin, and that will actually match your little picture you'll see on the door of your bobbin area. So make sure that goes all the way down. Look for a little groove right here at six o'clock. There's a little tiny arrow noting where it is. Make sure that your thread drops in there and then pull it to the side. It's gonna go about a quarter, just a big quarter inch length that is the tension down here. Let it go ahead and lay off to the side. 
And to bring the bobbin thread up, hold the thread from the needle with your left hand and take one full stitch. Now here's the key with this machine. One full stitch always means that the take-up lever comes back up to the highest position. I'll never forget my mom teaching me how to sew, and that was the first thing she taught me. And you know what? I never had sewing machine issues. So it really is the first thing to learn. One full stitch all the way down, all the way up. While you're holding this thread, it has now brought up a loop. That happens to your bob be your bobbin thread. Pull that right on out and put both those threads underneath the foot into the back. Then you can take the door, place it into its ledge on the left, click it down on the right, and we are ready to sew. Let's see how we've done. So we're gonna go ahead, just take your fabric. Anytime I test sew a machine, I take a piece of fabric and fold it in half. Sewing on a single layer is just really not anything that we are gonna get a good result on. So we're just gonna set it in there, reach in here, lower down the presser foot, and let's sew. Oh, I love the way these machines sound. They're so, they almost just, they sound so rich and full. Now, when I stop sewing, make sure that when you are gonna take your fabric out, bring this take up lever to the highest position. I'll keep reminding you of that, but when you get in that habit, when you take this out, Lift up your presser foot, slide it to the side. We have a little cutter on the back corner of the, the machine here, and I always go from back towards me. And I can do this with one hand, cuts the threads beautifully, and then you see you've got a perfect seam as you go. All right, let's do this one more time. We're lowering it down. Do you notice I don't have to hold my threads when I start to stitch? And that's because of this. We have completed the stitch. We've brought it up from the last stitch we took, and now it's ready to start the new stitch. So you always watch people holding on those threads, and you don't, as long as you do the proper technique. And when you start with your needle in fabric first, now if you're gonna be way back here and that fabric's not underneath your needle for the first stitch, yes, hold your threads. But most of you will find yourself, you slide in a little bit, and then you can use the reverse button, hold this down, take a few stitches back and forward, and then those are locked completely as you go. If you wanna stop and turn a corner, drop the needle into the fabric, lift up your presser foot, turn your fabric, and away you go. Whether your machine is stopping with the needle up, even though I could, looks like the stitch is done, it is not. Take that take up lever all the way back to the top, pull it out to the side, cut your thread, and we are ready to move on to see what other accessories come with this machine.